hello everyone today we are going to start a new module combinational circuit design in our previous module we have seen that given a boolean expression how we can implement using gates how we can optimize it and what are the delay and area characteristics of of a boolean expression one question which uh, which was left in our previous module was that how the boolean expression would be initially obtained who will give this boolean expression so we'll try to answer this question in this module and while answering this this question we will uh, try to learn about some of the commonly used combinational circuits like multiplexers decoder and coder all of these combinational circuits try to implement some of the common or basically some some standard boolean expressions similarly we will also learn about how to implement arithmetic circuits in one of our previous module we have seen uh, how numbers are represented using binary 0 and 1 now we will see that how addition multiplication or other arithmetic circuit can be implemented using using boolean algebra and using gates we will also while doing all this analysis while, while doing all the designing we will also analyze what are the area and what are the delay characteristics so that analysis will do we'll also see in this module that uh, how some of the programmable logic can also be designed as a side effect of whatever we have uh, we will learn so the first question that uh, given a boolean so how do we derive these boolean expressions there are two answers one a uh, important one of the answer is that we try to derive these boolean expression from from our english specification so let's say we want to design something so the design prob problem will come from the english specification or the english behavior or the behavior we specify in some of the high level language like um, c c++ so that is one one of the input of this boolean expression the other input of the boolean expression will come from the functionality so uh, for example when we will study this the example of addition multiplication so all of those boolean expressions are coming from the functionality of the design or functionality of the specification so let's take one example let's say we want to design a boolean circuit for this question that you should laugh at a joke if it is funny it is good in taste and it is not offensive or it is told by your class professor and it is not offensive so uh, what is the procedure if i want to derive a boolean expression out of this kind of a plain english language uh, statement then i'll try to decipher what is input what is output here uh, it seems the input is let's say f if joke is funny and let's say t if joke is also good in taste if it is good in taste then t would be true otherwise it would be false let's say o represent if joke is offensive if offensive then o would be true otherwise false and p means if it is told by professor so i have identified that there are four inputs f t o and p what is the output whether i should laugh or not let's say l is the output so by looking at the boolean uh, by looking at this this english statement i can create a boolean expression that my output l will be 1 if a uh, joke is funny f into it should be a uh, good in taste also and it should not be offensive <coughs> or it should be told by professor and it should not be offensive so this could be the boolean expression which finally we can implement using gates let's take one more example so uh, let's say the uh, an iot node 
should stop if a manual button is pressed of or error has occurred or no more data to process so uh, because there is no data it want to process uh, no data it doesn't have any data to process it will stop or something is manually pressed so i can identify my inputs my input would be if manual stop is there error is there or data is there all of these three inputs are single bit and the output is a uh, stop so i can also find out the boolean expression for this s should be equal to m and e and not of d so this way from the english statement we can find out uh, some of the boolean expressions let's take out some more intricate example uh, let's see how do we add so in add we, let's say i want to add three bits a b and c what would be the output of these three bits let's say if all of these three bits are 1 1 1 1 the output would be two bits 1 and 1 if these three bits are 1 uh, 0 and 1 then the output would be 1 0 means 2 so uh, here carry represent two's place and sum represent one's place so Uh, and a b and c all of these three represent units place or ones place if we are adding these three bits then we would have this two bit output uh, ones place i am calling sum and carry is the twos place so if i try to see then uh, when the sum would be one either when only one of the bit is one or all three bits are one then sum is going to be one while carry says when a uh, two or more bits are one then carry would be one so we can uh, represent these english statement also in form of a boolean expression so uh, the first statement sum says that only one of the bit should be one so that means a is one b and c are zero b is one a and c are zero a and b are zero c is one or all three bits are one so that means a is one b is one c is one so these are the conditions when my sum has to be one similarly for carry we would like to see that um, when two or more bits are one then carry is done so that means let's first find out the condition for two bits to be one a and b is one c is zero a and c is one b is zero a is zero b and c are one two or more bits are one so that means the other condition is when all three bits are one a b c all three bits are one so this give us the expression for carry now after getting this expression for sum and carry after getting this boolean expression now we can go for our simplification process using k map or quinn maclexki method or using boolean algebra or if we don't worry about cost we can use them as is also so this is how we can uh, um, create such boolean expression let's take one more example so now uh, we would like to have an output as one of the input so let's say i have two inputs a and b and output z is the output so um, my output z should be equal to a if a is selected and output should be equal to b if b is selected how these a and b would be selected so let's say uh, we have another input which says selection or which says control if that control is zero this is a one bit control so if control is zero then a is selected if control is one then b is selected so uh, this is also one of this um, now how do we uh, write the uh, boolean expression for z then i can write z is equal to a if control is zero a and control not of control or equal to b if control is one so what does it mean it means that if control is zero then this value would be one and if control is zero then this value would be one and this would be zero because it is zero whatever is the value of b it's going to 
become 0 and whatever is the value if a is 0 z will become uh, 0 if a is 1 z will also become 1. Similarly, if control is 1 then it does not depend at all on a it depends only on the b. So, uh, if value of b is 0 then z would be 0 if value of b is 1 it would be 1. So, it is another way of uh, writing um, Boolean expression. So, this is how um, yeah this this was the another example let us say instead of two inputs let us consider a little more input let us say four input case. So, in four inputs uh, my output z should be equal to either a or b or c or d because I was selecting I am selecting four inputs out of four inputs my control should have two bits at least let us say call them c0 and c1. So, if c1 c0 is 0 then uh, z should be equal to a if it is equal to 1 control is 1 then z should be equal to b if control is 2 1 0 is 2 uh, then z is equal to c and if control is 3 z should be equal to d. So, uh, if I want to write a boolean expression for this then it will become something like this. Um, if control is 0 0 that means c dash c 1 dash c 0 dash and it with a c 1 dash c 0 and it with b c 1 c 0 dash and it with c and c 1 c 0 and it with d. So, um, for example, if my control is 0 0 then all these conditions would be true. So, that means there would be no impact output will not depend on b c and d but because this condition is true whatever is the value of a that would be passed to z. So, if a is 0 then z is 0 if a is 1 then z will become 1. Similarly, similar things would happen for all other control inputs and uh, so in the end based on these control inputs based on what input is selected that particular input will be copied to output or output would be equal to that particular input which is selected. So, this particular circuit if we generalize then it become a very very powerful and one of the most commonly used circuit of our digital system. This is called multiplexer. In short we also call it MUX. So, this multiplexers uh, is generally we can say it is n is to 1 multiplexer where there are n inputs there is a control output uh, control input and there is one output that is why it is called n to 1. So, it is selecting one of the input as the output out of n inputs. So, uh, what what is the size of C? size of c uh, depends on number of bits in c depends on what is the value of n. So, if I take log 2 log to base 2 of n and take the ceiling of that that will give me the value of c. So, for example, uh, if total number of inputs is equal to 5 then my c has to be 3 bit byte or if uh, my n is 8 then c has to be again 3 bit byte. If number of inputs are 1000 then C has to be 10. So, it is simple log 2 and the ceiling of that. So, uh, and internally we can implement this, this circuit as uh, similar to whatever we have done in previous one or two slides. So, we can say Z is sum of mean term k into i k. So, um, that essentially means that let us say mean term 0 into i 0 mean term 1 into i 1 mean term n minus 2 into i n minus 2 mean term n minus 1 into i n minus 1. So, this way uh, essentially if uh, the, there is a n input multiplexer n to 1 into input multiplexer. So, there would be in each of the product term there would be um, so, let us say the, the number of bits number of bits in C is m then uh, each of the product term will have m plus 1 literal. 
okay and how many such product terms are there the number of product terms are equal to n because for each uh, product so for each input there is one product term total number of product terms would be n and in the end there would be one or gate which would be uh, taking the or of all the n inputs or all the n uh, product terms so in uh, so uh, in, in this way so let's say i can summarize the cost of this n is to 1 multiplexer would be there are uh, m control bits assuming m control bits and uh, there are n inputs so total number of input would be n plus m and there is one output total number of n and gates are n and the input of each AND gate would be m plus 1 as discussed uh, now and there would be one OR gate with n input. So this is the overall cost of a n is to 1 multiplexer. So what if, if my n is not exact power of 2. So let us say my uh, this is a 5 is to 1 multiplexer. So in case the multiplexer is 5 is to 1 then the rest of the inputs so um, the, the, it, it will not be there. So what it essentially means that if the, the value of C is from those invalid combinations, then we are not sure what would be the output. It comes into category of in, incompletely specified circuit. So because my circuit is not completely specified, then uh, output could be anything. So, uh, if this multiplexer is given as a component, then we will not connect those those input pins and we can leave them open. So, that is how if uh, the thing the case would be if n is not power of 2. If n is power of 2, then it is a kind of an optimal design. Okay. So, this is how the cost of multiplexer is. Now, um, this also gives us an idea if the, the, the multiplexer become big let us say it is a uh, 1024 colon 1, 102421 mux. So that means I will have in the first stage there would be 1024 AND gates each with a uh, input of 11, um, each AND gate will have uh, 11 inputs. Similarly, in the second stage there would be an OR gate with 1024, 1024 inputs. And as discussed in our uh, one of the previous lectures, if the number of input increases, our cost increases, area increases as well as delay increases. So it is not a very effective design that is why whenever multiplexer size grows, it is usually suggested that we use smaller multiplexers and we, we create a multi-stage design. So let us take an example of this. This is also called hierarchical design or a multiple stage design. So uh, let us say we want to design a 16 to 1 multiplexers using 4 is to 1 multiplexers. So in, this, in that case what we will do is we will have uh, how many 4 is to 1 multiplexers we would require because we require 16 inputs. So we would have 4 4 is to 1 multiplexer in our first stage. So um, the way it would be that first 4 inputs would be connected to first MUX and then I4 to I7 would be connected to second MUX, I8 to I11 would be connected to third MUX and I12 to I15 would be connected to fourth MUX. What about the control input? So that lower 2 bits lower 2 bits of the control. So uh, 16 is to 1 will have 4 input control. We will divide this 4 input control as like 2 bits of LSB and 2 bits of MSB. So this 2 bits of LSB C0 and C1 would be given as a control signal to all of these multiplexers at stage 1. The output of these stage 1 multiplexers would be given as an input to another 4 is to 1 multiplexer which is controlled by uh, MSB of my control that means C3, C3, C2. Now when we connect all of them, now when we connect uh, this 
when we connect the uh, first stage multiplexer to corresponding i0 i1 i2 i3 of second stage that's how we can uh, design a bigger multiplexer okay so the similar approach can be used to design any bigger size multiplexer we will keep on dividing the stage stages or we will keep on using so let's say uh, same um, design of 16 cross 1 multiplexer which already have two stages can be used to design uh, 256 colon 1 multiplexer okay any arbitrarily size multiplexer can be designed using this uh, 4 is to 1 multiplexer by by hierarchically creating bigger and bigger designs okay so let's quickly see what would be the cost impact um, now a 16 col colon 1 16 to 1 multiplexer would have 16 and gates with 5 inputs and one 16 input or gate while a uh, cost of 4 to 1 mux would be 4 AND gate with 3 inputs and 1 4 input OR gate. So in the first stage we will have uh, 4 4 is to 1 mux and the second stage we will have 1 4 is to 1 mux. So if we try to do the delay calculations, if we try to do area calculations, it has been seen that um, we can choose a um, suitable model. So we can see that uh, this the design using a hierarchical mux is is many times much more efficient both in terms of area as well as in terms of delay okay so uh, let's see one more kind of multiplexer design which is multi bit multiplexer so sometime it happens that the the number of uh, the the input to this mux is not single bit so we have to multiplex we have to multiplex multiple of these inputs which are grouped together. So uh, let's say this I0 was essentially 4 bits. I am calling it I01, I02, I03 and I04. Similarly my I1 input is also 4 bit I11, I12, I13 and I14. And uh, similarly my output will also be 4 bit Z1, Z2, Z3 and Z4. Now, all of them would can be controlled by a single C bit and uh, if I see internally they are they are simply a copy and replication of these 2 is to 1 muxes. Okay? So uh, the only thing is that a particular bit is connected to each of these mux respectively and a control bit is same for all these mux and the output is combined. So when we have such kind of a multiple bit input, we we call that instead of a bit, we also we call it a bus. So the input instead of a wire would be would be a bus. And uh, as far as design is concerned, sim symbolically we also represent it using this. So um, this is a bus. The symbol of bus means there would be a slanted uh, line like this and uh, there is a number written over it. That number signifies how many bits in that bus is. So here I0 means that there in I0 there are 4 bits, I1 also there is 4 bit. If there is no slant line and there is no number that means it is considered as a single bit number. In some other representation. Um, Sometimes the size of the bus is not given, but the difference uh, the diagram you will see is that um, the um, the wires will be will be of lesser width or basically not bold, while while the buses will be will be bold. That means they, they are collection of wires, so they become little wide. So uh, yeah. Another thing which I missed uh, previously, so the, the way we will always write uh, uh, design this uh, like put a symbol of multiplexer, it would be a trapezoid which will have little wider side on the input side and less wider side on the output side. Control is usually shown on the side. So these are the major input data inputs and uh, this uh, C determines the control input. Okay, so uh, this is how uh, like multiple bit multiplexer. So we also uh, call it let's let's say here we can call it four bit two is to one multiplexer. Similarly, any number of uh, bit bits could be there in these multiplexers. 
so uh, we said that this multiplexer is one of the commonly used very powerful design so let's try to understand what kind of applications are there for these multiplexers so let's look at a couple of these applications now one of the application which is very very important that this multiplexers can be used to design any generic circuit so let's say i want to design an and gate from 4 is to 1 multiplexer so what i can do i can at the input of this these four inputs i can uh, write the truth table of a and b that means at zeroth input i can tie it to zero first input i can tie it to zero second input also i can tie it to zero third input i can tie it to one so and uh, these control inputs if they are a and b if both a and b are zero so that means whatever is at zeroth input that would be selected and given to output so that means output would be zero if a is zero b is one then whatever is there at this input will be given as output so that means z would be zero similarly for uh, a and b as one and zero the output would be zero for a and b equal to one one so the output would be one so in this way here we are able to design an and gate using 4 is to 1 multiplexer okay so uh, now you can ask multiple questions here one question that why or how much wise it is to design an and gate using 4 is to 1 multiplexer cost of my 4 is to 1 multiplexer is there are four three input and gates and one four input or gate it is very very costly with respect to one and gate so the reason i would like to design any generic circuit using multiplexer though multiplexer is very much much more costlier than my uh, circuit which i want to derive but it gives me a genericness so this genericness is is very very useful in some cases the most important usefulness or use case of this generic circuit is that uh, since the cost of fabrication is very very high we can put we can create all of these 4 is to 1 multiplexers fabricated on the chip and then finally give these values 0001 or like whatever logic pattern we have whatever truth table we have that truth table we can give as a input in sort of a memory so we can design a let's say 4 is to 1 memory or 4 bit memory which which keep these four values and we attach those memory cells with the input of my mux and then um this memory i can write at run time but all these muxes are fabricated okay so uh, in that way i can design a programmable i can uh, design a programmable hardware so i'll try to rephrase things so hardware once it is fabricated it cannot be changed the cost of fabrication is very very high so because cost of fabrication is very very high and um we cannot reprogram it we cannot uh, redesign it so that is why sometime it is desirable that we design our hardware in such a way that it can be <coughs> we can design our hardware in such a way that uh, it can be used as any circuit whatever we want so the the programmable part is writing whatever memory content we would like to write so if we write the proper correct memory contents then we can program these fpgas as we want to design 2 is to power n input uh, so to design an n input function any input n input function i would require 
to the power n input multiplexer. So let's say I want to design any function of four inputs, then I would require 16 is to 1 max. So uh, one more side point here that um, designing a generic circuit is also important because let's say using these two inputs total number of functions which could be designed are, are fairly large. So for from two inputs I can design some 15 different functions. So uh, that's why it is it is required as the number of inputs will grow the total number of functions which could be which which are possible using those inputs also grows exponentially. So that is why if we have a generic circuit it can implement any of those functions to our uh, like whatever we desire. Other than this generic circuit implementation these multiplexers can also be used to uh, to realize sort of if else construct so let's say i have this kind of a statement if a equal to 0 then z is equal to 10 if a is equal to 1 then z is equal to 15 and if a is equal to 2 then z equal to 0 so how can i uh, design such um, such a specification Okay, so you try to remember how we started. We are saying that in, in case of multiplexers, one of the input is going as the output. So that means my output is either 10 or 15 or 0 based on if that particular value is selected. So uh, z equal to 10, 10 would be selected to as a value of z if a is 0 and 15 would be selected if a is 1 and 0 would be selected if a is 2. So what I can do is I can keep this a as a control and I can design a multiplexer where 4 is to 1 I can use 4 is to 1 multiplexer where uh, I will tie my i0 input to 10 I will uh, connect my i1 input to 15 I will connect my i2 input to 0. What should I connect my i3 input to? That is a question mark. So uh, as we discussed before, we can leave it open. It will not harm, it will not affect our circuit anyway because we will say that i equal to a equal to 3 is a illegal option. It is a do not care condition. Okay? It is an incompletely specified machine. So um, now this this circuit can effectively use so if a is 0 0 that means a is 0 um, 2 bits of a are 0 0 then 10 would be passed as a z and if a 2 bits of a is 0 1 then 15 would be passed if 2 bits of a is 1 0 then 0 would be passed to z and a equal to 1 1 or a equal to 3 will never occur. So this is this is uh, certainly a very good advantage that if I want to implement such kind of a behavior or such kind of a functionality, this MUX multiplexers could be very very efficient. Now let's let's consider one more uh, example. Yeah. So before that, uh, one more uh, question here that can't we simply design threes to one MUX? So um, if we see it from the hardware perspective, if we leave the, um, so we, we remember in 4 is to 1 MUX there were 4 uh, AND gates each with 3 inputs. So if we leave the last AND gate uh, with 3 input, then we would effectively be able to design 3 is to 1 MUX. So okay, is there any, any alternative way or uh, what if? this this a is not like this a, a equal to 0 or equal to 1 2 so if the value of a is not equal to 0 1 or 2 so um, in those cases if conditions are not equal to 0 1 2 so uh, then it would be something like this let's say when a is less than 0 then z equal to 10 if a is equal equal to 0 then a equal to 15 and if a is more than 0 then z equal to 0 so here you see the value of conditions or control is not equal to 0, 1, 2. 
so what should we do we would have two choices here one choice is that uh, whatever whatever number we will get we will get some condition out of this either we construct 0 1 2 three different numbers okay so we create we we call a a is less than 0 should be equal to 0 and a equal to equal to 0 should be equal to 1 and a more than 0 should be equal to 2 so other than that there is one more alternative idea so we put these three condition bits so this this these are the condition bits all of them we create a different condition bit so this is let's say condition bit 0 this is condition bit 1 this is condition bit 2 and we combine these three bits to make it a bus and we make sure such things will happen that uh, such things can be helpful when we make sure that only one of them is one at one time if only one of them is one at one time which is true at least in this case if a is less than 0 a cannot be equal to equal to 0 or a cannot be more than 0 so if all of these three conditions are are disjoint so that means only one of them would be true then we create such such an array okay so then we can create this 3 is to 1 max and this kind of conditional encoding is also called one hot encoding so we call it this one hot encoded max now this condition 0 this condition 0 can be ended with my 0th input i0 and this condition 1 could be ended with my first input the condition 2 can be ended with the my my second input and all of these three could be ORed together so you see this one hot encoded mux is much much cheaper in terms of a hardware cost if I consider 3 to 1 mux which is only a single bit it's like um, we have a bus here but instead of that if it is a single bit then the total number of AND gates would be there would be 3 AND gates with the input 2 2 input 3, three uh, um, AND gates and 1 OR gate with 3 inputs so the cost is also less because input of each of the AND gate has reduced if it is 1 hot encoded so uh, then you can ask another question then if one hot encoded is so good then why should we use um, that um, the other standard regular max question is valid correct but this will also increase in the number of inputs to max and it is not always desirable so let's say i have a very large max like 16 to 1 max so there the control bits will become 16 so sometime that kind of a flatted this particular condition that all the um, condition bits has to be disjoint and only we have to ensure only one of the bit has to be one at one time that may not be true in all the cases so that is why a regular mux has its own importance while one hot encoded mux has its own advantage that there would be some scenarios like these scenarios where one hot encoded mux could be useful could be efficient and while attempting our design problems we can see that which particular mux would be good for our purpose uh, let's see yeah so this we have already discussed that condition 0 0 bit of condition is a is less than 0 first bit of condition is a equal to equal to 0 second bit is equal to a more than 0 now uh, other than that also we see various numerous application of multiplexers so um, it's like uh, I can give at least one line description of some of them the idea is that wherever we need to select one input out of several inputs then we have to use multiplexer so you can uh, think of this like um, you have uh, you have a smart home so in smart home 
let's say your uh, your television is smart and their television can take input from con uh, your mobile phone and there are multiple mobile phone at home and it can also take input from um, a remote control okay so finally it has to take input only from one of the guy either one of the mobile phone or the remote control so it it's a like a you have to have some multiplexer there okay so similarly let's say there there are uh, multiple uh, uh, so you have uh, a memory device so um, now this this memory device is taking input from multiple of this uh, um multiple of the hosts so like yeah you have you can have multiple processors you have gpu over there you have processor you can you can sometimes have accelerators or some other chips so all of them want to access memory only one of them should be able to access at one time this is called arbiter so such kind of different um, use case would be there in in our network switches it's it's quite common that uh, all of us would be using our our um, our network uh, switches as well as routers so these these scenarios become very popular and very common that we have to select one of the input from the given n number of inputs so these are the various applications of of multiplexers and we will see with with more examples as we go on so uh, when we'll do some of the design experiments we'll see that uh, how these multiplexers are used so with this uh, we can close this particular lecture and in summary we can say that in this lecture we have learned how to how to generate or how to create boolean expressions from the english specification or a high level specification so we have considered couple of these, these examples um and now so other than that we have also learned how to write boolean expression for for multiplexers and therefore we have also learned these multiplexers and how useful it can be as a standard combinational circuit so we have seen various use cases where applic various applications of this these multiplexers thank you very much